Hey everyone, welcome to episode six of Breakdown. It's your fearless leader, Tone Loke, coming at you with another interesting video. With the recent HD remake of Final Fantasy X on Steam, I had a chance to go back to one of my favorite game franchises of all time. After playing it for about 20 to 30 hours, it's difficult for me to say that I actually enjoyed my time with it. Playing old games or remakes made me quickly realize that games have evolved so much. The fidelity, the smoothness, mechanics, and more importantly, the pacing and design of games themselves. Games are so much snappier and easier to get into now, and it makes me rethink the way I view older games and their relevancy. Let's talk about two quick reasons why this is the case. With our first talking point, games are developed for their current generation and market. Developers make games according to what's called market research and demographics. Who is buying my game? How old are they? And what are their respective gaming preferences and gaming patterns? If I know this, I can reduce my overhead and my costs by streamlining the development process and focus on what the player actually wants out of my game. Preferences of certain games change over time and can become skewed with the introduction of competition of new technology. Also, people get older as time flies by. Their needs and their wants change, and we can see this if we just look into a telescope back into time. Look at the evolution of Final Fantasy and Call of Duty. Gameplay is shifted towards linearity, simplicity, and accessibility. They're becoming substitutes for gameplay depth. What about the unfortunate demise of the adventure platform genre? Or the decelerated popularity of tactical strategy games over the years? All victims of changing consumer tastes. Not only, but today's digital age allows for the influx of an infinite amount of games to flood in around us. And circling back, older games lack relevancy today because of this. It sure as hell not as fun going back to a game with 15 year old outdated gameplay systems. These games don't satiate the palates of gamers whom have had their preferences changed through time. Moreover, due to the fact that so many games exist out there, it can debunk the affinity towards our favorite games and make us less inclined to stand for outdated gameplay design. Let's take a peek at our second talking point. Relevant games mirror current gaming standards. The most relevant games in my opinion that stand up today are the ones that gel with our current gameplay trends. Donkey Kong Country, Mario 3, Punch-Out, some of the old Street Fighter games, Crash Bandicoot. Did you spot the trend? They are games that are immediately satisfying and offer a good sense of challenge. However, even these games are limited by gameplay engineered on 15-year-old controller schematics. More often than not, popping in something like Super Mario Maker will feel leagues better and be more rewarding than some of those old dinosaurs, which is exactly why games have sequels. More importantly though, I want to talk about the other species of games. I'm talking about the classic games that we often reminisce about, but go back and play them again. It's harder to fall back in love with them. Classic games like Final Fantasy 4 or 7, Castlevania, Chrono Trigger, Xenogears, or even some of the old Zelda games. Are they still relevant today? I challenge you to go back and slug 50 hours into Xenogears or spend a month finishing Final Fantasy 7 you'll find that the systems engineered for these games are quite clunky and extremely time consuming. I'm looking at you, Knights of the Round, old buddy. The reason is this. Developers of old games were ill-equipped to standardize smart gameplay pacing into classic games. Backtracking, lopsided story objectives, awful pacing from area to area, non-scaling enemies and zones, lack of proper save states. It was hell in some of these games. Let's fast forward to 2016. With so much data out there, most developers can streamline their games to cut out all this nonsense and produce some more accessible games. A great example of when this happens is looking at something like, I don't know, Uncharted 2 for example. It took the classic third person Tomb Raider style Indiana Jones treasure hunting formula, but cut out all the junk. The clunky controls, the horrendous camera, and the irritating pacing. And more importantly, it streamlined player interactivity with a new take on environmental storytelling to keep the gameplay moving. As technology moves forward, gameplay and interface iteration become more developed and the boundaries for conventional gaming can break down. Better save states shield us from having to lament over painfully long sections of traditional role-playing games. Improved interfaces allow for shorter waiting periods during loading screens and transitions from interface to gameplay 
and creativity has allowed the passage of time to bring new and interesting iterations on our favorite gaming fundamentals. We no longer have to wait on our games for the most part, or agonize over faulty Stone Age gameplay systems and technology that holds us back from enjoying the game. That is the reason why it's harder for us to go back, harder than ever, to go back and pop in our old favorite games, especially those that harbor internally more of these issues. It's the reason HD remakes and remasters exist, if not for corporate wanting to grab more money out of your piggy bank, but because of the realization that games need updates to remain relevant. An old game can't rely on charm and fondness alone. It has to stand on its own two feet at the time you hit the start button. And most old games do restrict us from enjoying them due to some of these reasons. When I come back to a game years later, I don't want it to feel old. And many games do.